Now, not so long ago, it was viewed as a social crime, but fur has well and truly clawed its way back in the fashion stakes. While some designers are still using the real thing, many claim they're opting for ethical alternatives. But how would you know what you're really taking home? Well, here's Lucy Polkinghorn with the disturbing truth about clothes and accessories being sold in popular Adelaide stores and why, if they're already hanging in your wardrobe, you may never want to wear them again. If you feel these types of fur, they feel very similar, whether they are made of synthetic or, or natural. This one? Is that real fur? I'm not sure. I'm not sure? Yeah. The take-home message really for retailers and for consumers is that they can't really trust what is on the label. It's the fashion trend that's causing ethical, moral and emotional debate worldwide. There is matter. There is matter. Any animal that's used for its fur is killed horrifically and like I said there's no legislation to cover to protect them. Um, they are beaten, they are skinned alive. But despite the controversy, fur for fashion is still popular. From the catwalk we could have had it to the streets. Consumers are rugging up in fur products ranging from the traditional rabbit and raccoon to goat and mink. But what's also making its way into stores overseas and in Australia are items using domestic cat and dog furs. Two million dogs and cats are slaughtered every year in China and some other Asian countries every year specifically for their fur. Fur is fur! Sally Sutton from Animal Liberation SA says 85% of fur is imported from China. And despite our laws which ban cat and dog fur products, they are still slipping through our border security. It's actually cheaper for them to make a coat out of dog and cat fur than it is to make a synthetic coat. So a lot of it's to do with economics as well. Last year, the Humane Society found many major retailers were stocking products claiming to be rabbit when in fact they were dog. Now many fashion stores are refusing to stock real fur at all. Do you have any more for the fur? Um, for the real fur? No. no. No, nothing in real fur. But while we may think we're making the ethical choice buying only synthetic fur, can we really trust the labelling on overseas products? We can't know what we're buying because there is such weak labelling laws. I couldn't tell, and I was looking at the items myself. I wouldn't know exactly what that was unless I do a test. We conducted our own investigation, which included DNA testing to find out if we're having the wool pulled over our eyes, visiting several stores across Adelaide selling fur products. Mom, what is that? Yeah, what's the belt, I think? I'm pretty sure it's like a, like a Mongolian, like a sheep or a belt or something like that. Anyway. The sales assistants in the first two stores seemed confident in what they were selling. What, what is it? What's it made out of? I have rabbit and then these little bits of my But in other shops we visited, the products we picked up weren't labelled at all. What kind of fur? Not. I don't know. But this retailer was happy to take a stab. Bunny. Oh, bunny rabbit. Yeah, 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 bunny. Oh. Others weren't as confident. I guess it's not real. Just fake fur? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Only three of the seven products we bought were labelled with the type of fur they supposedly contained. Are, yeah. these, are these fake fur? No. I don't know what the name is. No, 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 no. The only way you can tell what that material is, if it's synthetic or natural, it, it's difficult to look at it and tell straight away. And so the only way really to do it is to, to perform one of two scientific tests. We asked forensic DNA scientist Professor Adrian Lineker from Flinders University, along with his team of analysts, to carry out DNA testing on the seven items we provided. Well, they're incredibly sensitive and they're very specific. These tests were specifically designed to detect the presence of cat or dog DNA. If there are other, do other species there, my DNA test, as I've done it at the moment, will not detect them. So, Adrian, here are the results. What do they tell us? What you can see on here is a series of bands on the gel. These are the first, these are four items, these are another four items. And you see this bright band here? 
that would indicate the presence of cat. The other bright band represents the presence of human DNA, likely to be from consumers handling the products in store. But what is disturbing... In five of those items, we got a positive response for the presence of cat DNA. This red jacket made in China, with no label, was tested twice. There are two types of uh, material on there. One's actually a, a hood-like lining, and one's on the uh, cuffs. And we sampled both areas, and both gave a positive result for the presence of cat. And it was a similar result for this furry accessory from the same shop. That item gave a presence for cat. Surprisingly, yes. As for these earmuffs, they too were made in China and... We did find traces of cat DNA actually on those earmuffs. I was slightly surprised. They felt rather odd when you felt them, but there was presence of cat DNA on those. This cat tail key ring from the same store, even more real than you'd dare to imagine. The other item is actually a sort of tail you provide me with. Right, again, yes, that's the traces of human DNA we pick up, and that's the presence of cat. And surprisingly, even this blue scarf labelled Mongolian fur had a similar result. It contains, according to my test, presence of cat DNA. In fact, the only two items which didn't test positive to the presence of cat or dog DNA was this bag. You provide me with a pony bag, which was a zip bag, sampled it, nothing. And this vest, labelled as rabbit and raccoon fur. If there are other, do other species there, my DNA test, as I've done it at the moment, will not detect them. Although Professor Lineker's results did find traces of cat DNA in five of these items, he says he cannot be sure how much cat fur is in there, and it's likely they also have a mixture of other animal species, including rabbit. It's really immaterial how much is in there. The fact is that it is cat that cat DNA is there, so there is cat somewhere in there. According to Sally Sutton, overseas manufacturers are able to get their illegal products through customs by mislabeling them or not labeling them at all. I think they are getting sneaky about it. They're definitely mixing dog and cat fur with synthetics to get it through customs. And consumers and retailers are none the wiser. Realistically, the only way that people can know that they're not buying cat or dog fur is to not buy fur at all, even fake fur. Fur is murder! Fur is murder! Yeah, it certainly is a worry, isn't it?